Hello, my name is Toby Salgado, and uh, this is Super Agents Live, How to Launch a Podcast, or How We Launched Our Podcast, Super Agents Live. Um, and if you're not familiar with the show, what we do is we talk with the most uh, successful and compelling uh, people in real estate. Uh, we're talking about two super agents, folks who have, um, they do $30 million and up in annual volume. We talk with uh, sales coaches. We talk with the big names. We talk with New York Times bestselling authors. And we talk with uh, social media people. So uh, the idea is that uh, for aspiring real estate agents out there, they can learn some tips and tricks and, and compress their learning curve. What I'm doing here with this video, the series of videos, we're going to launch right now. It's November, early November 2013. We're going to launch in two to four weeks. So what I plan on doing is uh, over the next uh, every day, until we launch, I want to do a five to ten minute video, let everybody know what we're doing, um, how we got there, and if it's if it works or not. Um, so today I want to talk about just uh, high level strategy, how we got here. <clears throat> so, and, and this is for anybody if you want to start a podcast, right? So some of the stuff's basic, but let's just start at the at the beginning, and then we'll get we'll get more uh, detail as we go on. <clears throat> and I will have other. Um, uh, modules uh, talking about all the stuff that I talk about today. So high level, listen, so if you want to start a podcast, you have to have an idea, right? Now, for me, how we got this idea, how I got this idea is I was listening to podcasts um, and uh, there was one guy in particular that came out, not necessarily a super talented guy, but uh, he came out roaring. So I realized that that uh, uh, you can you can even today in 2013 um, there's lots of podcasts out there, but you can crack the top ten. So I said, okay, I want to launch a podcast. <clears throat> what, what what kind? Now today there's lots of podcasts. Um, well, here's how I came up with my idea. I was listening to Andrew Warner of Mixer Gene. He was and he has a podcast, successful one. And he said, hey, if I had to do Mixed G all over again, I would do it for an industry. He said, well, you know, maybe it's HR or something. And uh, the idea around that is that if you create content for HR, the companies would pay you for that content. And I thought, oh, man, what a brilliant idea. So I started thinking, you know, that kind of got my wheels turning. And it keyed on me. Real estate agents. There's lots of real estate agents out there. There's, there's, not, there's not a lot of resources other than books or conferences or hiring coach to help these people succeed. So I said, okay, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to do it for uh, real estate agents. Boom. So get your idea. That was my idea. Having an idea is not good enough. You need to validate that idea. So for me, I did two things. Or, or here's the first thing I did. I talked to people around me, obviously, and people were like, oh, eh, you know, maybe. So um, I didn't get that. I wasn't thrilled with the, with the feedback I got. I went to a Zillow conference, a Zillow meetup, and I ran this idea by real live agents. And uh, basically, people were like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I'd listen to it. But they said, but I would listen to it if there was guys like Mike Ferry on it. Now, I didn't know who Mike Ferry was. And Mike Ferry is kind of the Tony Robbins of, of real estate. Uh, so there's Mike Ferry and his kid, uh, Tom, son, Tom Ferry. I literally left that conference, came back, uh, sent an email to both of them. And within, a, within an hour, I got a response back from those guys. And they're like, oh, hey, yeah, I'd love to share. So I'm like, okay, now I know, now I know that I have content, I have a podcast idea that people would listen to if they got these kind of people on there. Now I know that these kind of people will come on this show. So, so that, for me, that gave me a lot of validation. Now, that wasn't the end of my validating because then I spent uh, the next week or so and I dropped maybe 30 or 40 calls into different brokerages, <clears throat> ran the idea by them. And everybody said, hey, yeah, that's great. We love it. Um, our agents can certainly use it. And uh, you know, I said, hey, it's going to be free. And they said, well, I don't know if it should be free. You know, because the idea is that if something is free, there's nothing much value to it. So again, I got validation. <clears throat> For you, get your idea, go out and validate it. You have to talk to people in that market. Part of validation is, is finding an idea <clears throat> that, that the market is big enough, right? You can start a successful podcast around anything. You know, let's say that you have a passion around uh, shoeing horses. You can start a podcast around that. 
And you know what? You'd be the number one podcast for shoeing hor- horses, uh, but your audience is going to be like 10 people, right? Um, so you need to have a, a big enough audience. Now, you can't – it's not – so – you don't want too small of a market, but you don't want too big of a market, right? You can't say, hey, listen, I'm going to start a podcast or a company or whatever it is around fitness. Yeah, really? That's giant. You're not going to, again, you're going to have like three people who say, yeah, I want to know about fitness. You need to say, hey, I'm starting a podcast or a company around a niche. Like, hey, I'm doing a kettlebell curl podcast, right? So you have to, you just have to down. So get your idea, go out, validate, make sure the market is big enough. So once you once you have that, then you need to think seriously about revenue. Now, some people don't need to make revenue. I mean, certainly there's uh, Cliff Ravenscraft, the podcast answer man, started uh, his podcast empire uh, around a show called Lost. He did it for fun, and all of a sudden it took off, and now you know the guy makes a ton of cash doing it. Um, so, so you need to think about revenue streams. What are those, right? For me, our revenue streams are pretty typical, right? It's going to be, uh, we're going to sell sponsorship against the content. Um, we are going to uh, create mastermind groups because uh, after talking to people, we realized that these agents uh, uh, need something like that. Uh, and then I'll do one-on-one coaching. Now, everybody, God, everybody wants to be a coach. I don't really want to be a coach. Um, and I don't want to be a coach because it, it's not scalable. It's, it's no matter what, uh, you're trading an hour for a dollar. There's no leverage there. And all the things that I've done, and we can talk about my background probably on, 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 on the show or maybe one of these, <clears throat> I like leverage. I like spending $1 and getting five back or spending one hour and, uh, creating a product or a service that I, I can sell over and over again. So, Early on, third third revenue level will be uh, or stream will be one on one coaching, and the fourth is how uh, Ravenscraft makes a bunch of money, uh, as well as uh, Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income is just affiliate links, right? So uh, you you as a podcast or a company or whatever, there are services that you use. Now, if you use those services, they're valuable to you. They're probably valuable to a bunch of other people. So we will have links uh, to different things that we use, right? This mic, for example. Well, let me back up. So validate your idea. Think about revenue streams, and then you have to think about the how, right? If, especially if it's going to be a podcast. This is you know, how to launch a podcast or how we launched our podcast. You need to think about how to do it. Now, for me, I spent about two weeks figuring out the how. Way too long. And basically... Basically, what stumped me is that I'm, I have a Dell PC. Now, I got everything kind of hooked up, and I should have been able to. I looked at some guides on YouTube or whatever, and I basically could have recorded. Right? did everything I needed to do. I should have hit record and should have recorded. Couldn't do it. Couldn't figure it out. took me two weeks to figure out that Dell had cut a deal with the recording industry, whatever, and they had removed the one critical piece I needed to record, which was the stereo mix uh deal that you need to like oh, like authorize and then you can record <clears throat> they took that out now if you're on a Mac uh, uh, relatively easy to, re- to get on Skype and record a call or whatever uh, so figure out how to do it now for me I had to uh, uh, had to get this mixing board so I had to get the mixing board all figured out <clears throat> To record. So once you figure out the how, right, so now you know how to record your content, and then you need to figure out how to edit it. Now there's lots of, uh, lots of uh, uh, resources out there uh, to figure out how to edit it. There's free editing software. There's paid editing software. Me, personally, I use Adobe Audition. And again, some of the stuff <clears throat> I might talk about later in terms of what exactly that mixer is uh, and why I picked that mixer, why I picked this mic. Um, and, and there was a lot of research for me around to pick this particular mic. Um, <clears throat> and basically, it's a $60 mic that sounds like a $600 mic. So, so, uh, so you have to figure out the how, uh, and you have to figure out um, uh, you know, all the pieces you need to record and then figure out how to actually do it. Uh, so once you have all the equipment, right, that's the what piece, um, you need to take action. You need to go out and start recording your episodes. Now, for me, I'm doing, I'm interviewing 
super agents, right? Top producing agents. Now, luckily, I was able to find a list put out by Wall Street Journal of the top performing agents in the nation. And basically, I put together a uh, an email. And early on, uh, what what a hassle! I was literally cutting and pasting, cut it, cut the name, copy the name, search the name, find the email, go back to to Gmail. Uh, uh, paste the name in there, paste my, my standard int- utter nightmare. <clears throat> uh, a little bit after that, after sending out about doing that maybe 300, I don't know, 300 times, 350 times, I realized that there's a mail merge feature uh, that I can use uh, in Gmail where I can cut and paste uh, the email into the, the system, um, paste my intro email in, uh, into the, the mail merge document, hit mail merge, boom, and send out a hundred emails at a time. Now, um, I don't know if we want to get into Aweber and, and all this stuff. Uh, <clears throat> maybe we'll in a different uh, a different uh, episode for this. So take action, um, and uh, uh, and then the next piece. Once you take action, now for us, we need to decide what we're going to be. We're, are we going to be a daily show? Are we going to be once a week show, a twice a month show, whatever? And right now, we still haven't figured it out. Um, uh, there's a guy named John Lee Dumas who uh, who top ten guy. He interviews um, uh, tech entrepreneurs for the most part and authors. Uh, he is a daily show, so he gets he gets about four hundred thousand downloads a month. Now, if he has 30 episodes a month, I mean, you can, you can do some quick math and figure out how big his audience is for the most part. So if the more shows you have, um, uh, the smaller your audience has to be for you to monetize it, at least for advertisers, right? Because all advertisers care about is number of downloads, number of, of available eyeballs or, or you know, ear sockets that, uh, that their content can hit. So <clears throat> figure that out. We haven't figured it out for ourselves. Once you figure that out, uh, and we're we're getting to the point where we're going to launch, we're going to have to take a stand. And, and I'll tell you something. Here's what I think we're going to do. Uh, I think we're going to do it uh, every other day. So, uh, and then so once you do that, once you figure out the every other day piece or every day piece, then you need to start getting the word out. Now, this is a piece that a critical piece that we're digging into right now, which is Facebook marketing or. Uh, uh, Facebook ads. Uh, I don't really know how to do that. I just listened to a webinar with Amy Porterfield. Uh, it sounds pretty powerful. Um, I got to figure it out. So uh, once we get there, again, we're going to do this every day, five to ten minutes. Uh, once we get there, we sort of crack the code on that. Uh, we'll be talking about it in more detail. So until then, um, if you haven't, uh, go to superagentslive.com. Uh, sign up get pl- today. Get p- placed on the waiting list to get uh, this, our valuable content. Uh, if this is in the future and we've already launched, go and subscribe in U- iTunes. So hopefully you found this valuable. I'm sure that uh, the next set of uh, episodes where we dig into the specifics will be a little more valuable. Thanks so much.